is chapter five, states of consciousness, part three. So now we're gonna take a look at chemicals that changes our levels of awareness, and mood and perception, that being psychoactive drugs. And of course, you know, you're getting well used to it, but you'll pause this video and take a moment to look at what your uh, alcohol IQ would be. Um, this may be in the assignment and it may not be, but please take a moment and see for yourself whether or not you're adept and aware uh, about alcohol. Once you finish, unpause it and then go ahead and continue. All right, so let's first look at some uh, important terms I want you to be able to uh, look at and study for exam purposes. Drug abuse. Drug abuse is when you're taking drugs that causes you either emotional and physical harm or physical harm. Uh, and that's as far as the, being a drug user yourself or others. And hopefully you're not a drug user, but that's what drug abuse would be. When we're talking about addictions, now this is more of a broader term, but it's kind of to help to describe now more compulsive sorry, a type, a compulsion type thing when we're talking about specific drugs or engaging in different and certain activities. Psychological dependence meaning is that you have this ultimately strong desire from within your mind, a mental desire or a craving that's going to help you want, you want to relive the feeling that you get. One area that has been um, a type of drug that has been pandemic is because most people want to feel that sense of euphoria that it gets, such as like with crack or with opioid use. Physical dependence is meaning that your body is pretty much have gotten adapted and adjusted to taking that drugs and it's going to want that same amount of drugs that's going to be necessary to help you to continue functioning. Now, of course, there are still more terms to learn, but <clears throat> when we're talking about tolerance, tolerance lead many users to be able to escalate their drug use as well as to experiment with other drugs uh, <clears throat> and to in, in an attempt to recreate that original euphoric feeling that I was speaking about or that altered state. Developing tolerance or cross tolerance doesn't mean uh, to prevent drugs from seriously damaging the brain, the heart, the liver, or other organs. When we're talking about withdrawal, this is that discomfort and distress that might occur uh, based upon the physical pain or intense cravings because you've stopped using a particular drug and your body saying, I need it, I need it to survive, I need it to live and it reacts to missing that particular drug. Now, most psychoactive drugs will produce their mood, the energy and perception altering effects by changing the body supply of the neurotransmitters. And what happens is that they can, you know, alter the synthesis storage and release neurotransmitters. You can see that within step one. And then there's the change, the binding effect of the neurotransmitters on the receiving site of the receptor neuron. That would be step two. Afterwards, the neurotransmitters will carry these messages across the synapse, sending it to the neuron normally would deactivate the excess or leftover neurotransmitters. That would be step three. However, when agonists drugs block this process, those excess neurotransmitters, they kind of remain up in the synapse, which will prolong the psychoactive drugs effect. So there's no reuptake happening, okay? Now, when we're talking about the effects of psychoactive drugs, we have several uh, categories that's listed here. Um, the first category we could talk about would be depressants, and depressants would include alcohol, barbiturates, anoxicillics, uh, anxiety, anti-anxiety drugs. The effects of it would be disinhibit <clears throat> disinhibition 
as well as drowsiness and muscle relaxation. Undesirable effects would be anxiety, nausea, poor reflexes. Stimulants would include cocaine, amphetamines, methamphetamines, uh, which is crystal um, methamphetamines, which is crystal meth, or MDMA, which is also known as ecstasy. Now, this is the euphoric feeling that people get. They're, they're feeling exhilarated. They are looking for this high, sh straight mental energy trip um, that's going to actually reduce your, your desire. They want to eat. Your perception of power changes. Social ability is going to change. All that goes askew. Irritability, anxiety, sleeplessness, paranoia, hallucinations as well as elevated blood pressure and temperatures and it also may um, have a person go into convulsions or even lead to death the next one is going to be caffeine and with caffeine what it does is help to increase alertness but what it also do is creates insomnia person becomes restless uh, there might be some delirium ringing of the ears as well as a rapid heartbeat excuse me Nicotine is used primarily for relaxation. It does supposed to increase alertness as well as a lot of times people smoke because other people smoke. But what it does um, do as far as side effects, you might have irritability, higher blood pressure, you might deal with gastric uh, pains, nausea and vomiting, can lead to cancer, heart disease, as well as emphysema. Opiates, and we all have heard recently about the opioid epidemic. Well, this falls within this uh, section and area, these narcotics. It can include morphine, heroin, codeine, oxycodone. And what people get from it is that rush of pleasurable feeling of pain relief. I'll never forget, there was a time that I took, uh, I had a, a gallbladder that had to be removed, but before they removed it, went to the hospital, I was in excruciating pain. And they gave me Demerol, which is a derivative of morphine. Well, I, when I say as soon as it hit the bloodstream, not even, didn't take any time, immediate. I basically was like, woo. Said it out loud because that's how it felt. It was this warm rush of serenity, so to speak. Needless to say, I only allowed them to give me that one day because I could see why it was so addictive. But some side effects of opiates would also include nausea, vomiting, constipation, as well as other type of uh, withdrawal symptoms and. You might also be dealing with poor respiration, convulsions, you can go into a coma or even death. Now, the psychedelics or the hallucinogens, they include LSD, which is lysergic acid, diethylonide, mescaline, which is an extract that's coming from the peyote, um, peyote cactus, and magic mushrooms. And of course, let us not leave off marijuana. Now, with the f former uh, drugs that I spoke of, those can pretty much give you that euphoric feeling. You may experience hallucinations, delusions. You know, you they used to have this running joke that you might see a pink elephant at any time. Well, you're seeing a pink elephant because you're hallucinating. And that's what these drugs were made produced. Um, it's going to change your thoughts and your perceptions. Um, of what's around you it might make you paranoid then there's uh, things to worry about would be like I said paranoia nausea um, and major uh, issues would include psychosis all right marijuana great debate is over people are finding um, it is one of those uh, type of drugs that has slowly a psychedelic that has been used for so long but it also demonstrated and shown a lot of medical benefits with the thc therefore there have been some states who have legalized the drug 
uh, but Mississippi is not one of them. Right now, for Mississippi, there's a petition that has been signed in order to put up a vote for medical marijuana. Uh, we haven't gotten to the point where people are willing to say, all right, let's just make it legal and reap the benefits everybody else is reaping. Not yet, but uh, Mississippi has been in considering uh, legalizing medical marijuana to help those um, because it can help with glaucoma, it can help with people who have cancer, people who are struggling with severe pains. So, yeah, I'll keep moving. Now, when we're talking about depressants, and I, and I don't have to say this because I had a, a student one day, uh, we were having a conversation about alcohol and she just kept yelling out at the wrong time, it's a depressant. Yes. It's under the depressants, but not as how she was saying. And it makes you depressed. No, it's not that it makes a person depressed in that same thing. What it does is suppress our system, okay? Uh, some scientists say that addiction to alcohol is one of the most powerful. As this is, uh, you know, have been able to identify what actually would regulate that craving of, for alcohol in the brain, which might ho hopefully we'll come up with new therapies to assist alcoholics as we learn more. But drugs, period, that's under this particular section, they act on our central nervous system to suppress or slow bodily processes. And basically what it does is it reduces our overall responsiveness. So that's what is called downers. So when we call it a depressant, don't think of it as it makes you depressed in the mind and, oh, uh, not that same type of movie. I'm not talking about those depressive symptoms. I'm talking about how your body's reaction, the, 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 uh, ref your reflexes is going to be different. You're going to be, <sighs> and you're going to be wanting, you'll, you'll be more willing to let go any inhibitions that you may have and say your piece and do whatever. That's what usually happens with depressants. Now, <clears throat> on this slide, it's going to illustrate how cocaine, which is, an, which is an agonist drug, will act as a stimulant. So, after releasing neurotransmitters into the synapse, the sending neuron is going to normally reabsorb or reuptake that excess neurotransmitter back within the terminal buttons. With, with cocaine, though, when it's present in the synapse, it kind of blocks that reuptake of dopamine as well as the serotonin and norepinephrine and these allow extra time for the absorb absorption by receiving a neuron so this extra processing time what it does is it'll intensify that that normal mood altering effect through these three mood and energy activating type of neurotransmitters so while the problems is, that's going to be associated with drug abuse are familiar to most people there has been research that would look at <clears throat> how exactly would it um, would it work pertaining to the neurons. Know that the methamphetamine is going to do damage to the brain as well as it affects long, uh, continue long after people stop using it. So these are one of those drugs that we have a a, a, a big um, problem with because. Even if we get a person to quit, our body is going to crave it that much longer because it learned to mimic very well the neurotransmitters. After repeated flooding with artificial opiates, the brain is going to eventually reduce or stop production of its own opiates. That's a big problem, okay? If a user um, later attempts to stop, what happens is the brain lacks both the artificial and normal level of pain-killing um, chemicals, and then withdrawal becomes excruciating, excruciatingly painful. So drugs that derive from opium that mimics the brain natural endorphins, which numbs pain and elevates mood, mood are those narcotics. So heroin, Vicodin, methadone, Percocet, those type of drugs, oxycodone, we have to be worried about. All right, and just to recap again, marijuana is going to be also known as a hallucinogen, even though it has 
a lot of properties of a depressant as well. It does induce some drowsiness and lethargy. Uh, and some of the narcotics as well, like a weak painkiller. But we've learned about more positive aspects, excuse me, <laughs> positive aspects about marijuana. And it does help produce mild euphoria. Uh, it helps moderate doses that lead to an intensification of sensory, uh, sensory experiences. The illusion that time is passing slowly. High doses may produce hallucinations, delusions, as well as distortions of body image. So remember I mentioned uh, earlier, the active ingredient, ingredient in marijuana is THC. And oh, by the way, if you didn't know the other name um, for marijuana, it's cannabis. But the THC and... I would love to pronounce that for you, but I know I wouldn't do it correctly. But what I'll do is I can spell it out for you. Um, oh, it's on the slide. You don't need me to do it. But tetrahydrocannabinol. I think I said it correctly. Uh, it basically attached to the receptors that are abundant throughout our brain. So on the positive side, just know that, uh, like I mentioned, marijuana helps with glaucoma. It does help increase your appetite. Um, it's going to alleviate nausea and vomiting. It's been used um, for cancer treatment, particularly with chemotherapy, as well as help with asthma, seizures, epilepsy, as and anxiety. So, it's the more we learn about uh, cannabis, the more we realize <clears throat> that there are ups, a lot more ups than downs. But some of the uh, impairments that can be caused can be toward your memory, your level of attention, and learning abilities. Additionally, it might also be related to uh, developing psychotic symptoms as well as birth defects, um, particularly in children with lower um, IQs. So too much of anything could be a bad thing, really. So ca chronic marijuana um, use also can lead to throat and respiratory disorders, impaired lung functioning, decreased immune response, declines in testosterone levels, reduced sperm counts, as well as, as, well as a disruption with the menstrual cycle and ovulation. Some research has supported the popular belief that marijuana will serve as a gateway um, to other legal drugs. However, there's also been a conflict with that because other studies have demonstrated very little to no connection as all, at all. So, this slide, the picture there shows what it might look like if you were dealing with psychedelics at this time. And you might be seeing some distortions um, of that monument where there's an added of space and change. <laughs> Moving on. All right, club drugs. Although club drugs can produce desirable effects like ecstasy and being able to feel great empathy and connectedness with others, almost all psychoactive drugs is gonna cause some type of serious health problem. And in most cases, in some cases, it can even be death. So just remember with the psychoactive drugs, they're used commonly at parties as well as clubs. Rofenol is that date rape drug. MDMA is ecstasy. Then you have GHB, ketamine or special K, crystal meth, as well as LSD, to name a few. And there may be some new ones out there that's not being mentioned here, um, but they have that same type of effect and impact as, as these psychoactive drugs. All right, so we got through uh, the psychoactive drugs. So now let's talk about healthier ways um, to reach an altered level of consciousness, that being meditation and hypnosis. So starting with meditation, although most people are in the beginning stages of meditation, will report a simple and mellow type of relaxation that's kind of followed by a mild euphoria. <clears throat> Advanced uh, mediators, they're going to report more experiences of profound rapture and joy, or they might even uh, experience strong hallucinations. The highest functions of consciousness would occur within the frontal lobe, 
particularly in the um, cerebral cortex. Now, scientists have been able to see an increasing level of evidence that would show altered states of consciousness as one experiences during meditation occurs when one can purposely change how the prefrontal cortex, again, that's going to be right behind your eyes, um, when you can change how it's functioning. Typically, when we're talking about the prefrontal cortex, we're talking about how it's, about, it's balancing your work and memory, how temporal integration occurs, and how higher order thinking, among other tasks, happens. So through investigation, it's been theorized that based on brain imaging, that when you could focus on a single object, that being emotion or a word, you diminish the amount of brain cells that must be devoted to these multiple tasks and instead it becomes involved in this singular focus of your meditation. So a narrow focus would allow other areas of the brain to be affected. And since the neurons are devoted to time, they kind of have to change focus. You're experiencing a sense of timelessness as well as a mild euphoria. Evidence has been able to also show that me meditation would help uh, us to cope better with stress. And just remember to go back to uh, the chapter on stress to kind of get a refresher on that. So let's keep moving. Now, since the 1700s, even up until now, you've had entertainers as well as pseudo-psychology um, try to use and abuse hypnosis. But there are those who can use it effectively, that being physicians, dentists, even psychologists that's also been able to use it a long, a long employed technique um, as a great clinical tool. Today, standards, it's removed must, a lot of the mysteries that surrounded hypnosis. So there's been a number of feature characterized um, through the hypnotic state. So when we're looking at a narrowed, highly focused attention, and that's basically being able to tune out competing stimuli, you're going to see an increase of use of imagination as well as hallucinations. A passive and receptive type attitude, you might see decreased responsiveness to pain, and this is a heightened suggestibility or willingness to respond to proposed changes. Uh, and that will be proposed changes within one's perception. So for an example of that is a person that's um, under a hypnotic state might be told that an onion is an apple and they believe it because of the suggestibility. When it's used therapeutically, know that it helps with phobias, weight loss, smoke cessation, improved study habits, as well as improved sports performance. Now, here is a slide that I want y'all to just take. It's gonna probably be found in your um, assignment, just to make sure that you go through a recall we're just talking about the different myths as well as the facts. Just, this is really tiny, so it's gonna be hard for you to see, but I did put it inside your assignment as well for you to read. Um, not that you have to answer any questions here, but it's something that I do wanna make sure that you're going over and being aware of. All right, and this completes chapter five, uh, <clears throat> States of Consciousness. Please do make sure that you complete the uh, complete the assignment that's attached to this. Okay, uh, that's going to be assignment number eight, I believe. Anyway, have a great day and a great week, and I will send you an announcement when we're ready for chapter six.